Amen. Wow. Amen. It's, so good. This is so good. This is the stuff that we're, we're talking about is really cool. And how you said anything in God's hands is so much better. And um, we, I, I feel, I, I'm very passionate about this because I feel like, you know, it's, it's very easy for people to kind of fall in the cracks or fall in the, in the routine or the mundane of, you know, this is my life. This is my daily habit. This, you know, I just kind of have, I do this. This is my career, whatever. And um, we, we sometimes devalue our own potential, or maybe we don't even realize our own potential. And so we've kind of been talking about like, you know, how can we impact people? How can we create, how can we really build momentum in people's lives? And what you were just talking about, putting uh, whatever we put in God's hands, he really does something great with it. Yeah. We sing about it all the time. All, I'm trying to remember lyrics. There's so many songs I just know from like being in moments on stage. Even uh, in Champion, there's a, song, there's a lyric that's like, you take the broken things and, and raise them to glory. And we wow. just sang that on Sunday. And so all I'm trying to say is like, we ourselves are those broken uh, vessels. Those, you know, uh, we, are, we are humans that are broken, that make mistakes, but in God's hands, being used by God, he can really do something yeah. with our lives. He can do something with our serving, with our sacrifice, sure. with our time, with our devotion. There's so much more that people have to offer um, when, when we realize, like, God wants to use us. Yeah. You know? And it's, he's not selective on who he chooses and, and I know I'm kind of getting ahead of myself but we just want to talk about that tonight we want to talk about leaders what it what it means to be a leader what it means to to uh, activate your potential and I love that rise to that you activating know? your potential is a great uh, everybody can activate their potential everybody has a destiny everybody has a God-given purpose you're, yeah. what you're what you're saying is so it's so good and, and healthy and people need to understand you're not just um, uh, a salesperson or a business owner or um, a, a, a father or a mother. We're all called to be leaders. We're all called to greatness. Yeah. You know, it really ties into, and maybe we, we can, you can pick up off of this as well, but it really ties into last week we were celebrating Martin Luther King Jr., uh, the, the, whole, the whole concept of, of what he stood for. Yeah. The, the, bringing equality and bringing justice and transformation in society and, and, and elevating the, the downtrodden and, and, and bringing and equalizing what has been unequal, but more, even more importantly, how he, that is sig so significant, Seriously, but yeah. he, he represented love. He represented the love of God. He, he symbolizes to me, when I think back, uh, he symbolizes to me what it means to follow Jesus, mm. to, to, to lead others into a transform, transformational experience. Like he changed our, he changed the culture of America. He changed the culture of the world. It, we still have such a long way to go, but here's a man who made a statement that quoted Jesus because Jesus said it in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, but Martin Luther King took that quote that Jesus said, the greatest among you shall be the servant of all. And Martin Luther King Jr. said, anyone can be great because anyone can serve. Right. Anyone can be great because anyone can serve. And I think there's greatness inside of every person yeah. and they don't realize how the greatness that's inside of them and they don't realize how to activate it. And I think wherever we are in life, right now, this moment, I wanna encourage and invite everybody to grab a hold of that concept that anybody can be great because anybody can serve. So where can I serve? What can I do to serve God better, to serve people better? I, I'd like to kind of describe it as we need to, every one of us needs to become savage servants. Love that. Right? right? Yeah. Like we need to see that every moment in our lives we have an opportunity to activate greatness by serving somebody. At our job, we can serve. Everybody goes to work and they do their job or they work from home or whatever they do and they just perform their function. But if we looked at every situation as an opportunity to serve somebody, yeah. if you're, whether you're helping somebody repair their, their kitchen sink or whether you're selling people automobiles or whether you're, uh, uh, whatever it is that you do, look 
for how you can serve somebody and be savage about it. Like, man, just be radical that my life is activated. My joy, my peace, my, my, my destiny is yeah. activated as I, as I take action and serve somebody, help somebody, encourage somebody, yeah. pray for somebody, um, serve, start a, start a, a, a small group in your, in your community and start a, a watch party, do something yeah. to, to serve others. 100%. And the greatness that's inside of people will begin to get activated through serving. And I think what's interesting about society is, you know, we have this hum humane tendency to want to reach for fame, reach for the glory, reach for the clouds. Like we want to, everyone has that desire to like, oh, like I, I would love to be big. I would love to be famous. I would Maybe not everybody, but you know, like, especially yeah. I, I'm kind of like, you know, in the, in the younger generation, like I, I'm involved in youth. And so kind of just try to think like a teen or whatever. Yeah. And I feel like with TikTok right now is one of the biggest trends. Everyone wants to be TikTok famous, you yeah. know, and, and reality is it's very easy. You know, you kind of have to just be goofy and silly and do some crazy stuff <laughs> and then you can be famous. But that's like how we're like sometimes that's how we're driven, especially our younger generation. We're driven to like be famous and we want to get to the top. But with serving, mm. that's the true greatness, because God's God's way of being great, God's God's greatness, which why would we want any other kind? Right, right. God's like true greatness of fulfillment is when we go down yeah you know, when we lower ourselves when we when we commit to the grind when we you know we even sing that song like uh when my knees hit the ground like i, I, I touch the song. sky when my knees hit the ground can you guys do that <laughs> sing it right now no, i'm just kidding uh i'll start singing it um no and so i think that's so big because like that's the secret to greatness yeah it really you know? is. And, and maybe it doesn't get acknowledged the way that the world would prefer or maybe it doesn't get acknowledged by the world but like god no notices that he That's sees right. that and he it's just like giving god we, like we're not going to announce who our top giver is or we're not i'm not going to sit here and announce i've given this much it's not about what is recognized by public right but god sees it and he's gonna he's gonna bring a harvest he's he really is honor whatever we sow and and serving is sowing you know yeah it really is and i i like I think about how everybody watching right now, everybody connected to us right now, we don't see ourselves better no. than anybody. We see ourselves as your servant. Like we're, yeah. we're, we're serving you right now. We're serving the bread of God's word, the bread of God's promises to you, the bread of, of, of leading you. But I want to inspire you to begin, I want to inspire people to begin to lead others. Yeah. Like the first thing that I did when I got saved was I started leading others to get saved too. Right. I didn't know I didn't know what else to do. I just thought, wow, this is if this can work for me and I can be saved, I can share this with everybody I know and they could be saved too and little did I know that it, I would face a lot of opposition in that, but I also saw some of my loved ones, some of my friends that I grew up with I saw them coming to Jesus mm. because I came to Jesus and I didn't become a leader because I wanted to be a leader. I became because I'm an introvert. I'm a quieter, <laughs> like shyer personality yeah. in general. But I just wanted to see other people experience what I experienced. And I want everybody who's connected to life changers to realize it is the greatest honor in life to follow Jesus, right? And Jesus models leadership. It says, I wanna just read the scripture yeah. to you and then let it take you wherever you wanna go with this as well. But Jesus said in, or it says of Jesus in Philippians 2, 5, let this mind or this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not think that it was robbery to be equal with God. So Jesus, was equal with God and he didn't think he was robbing God by being equal with him. He said, but even though he was equal with God, he made himself of no reputation and took upon the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, 
even death on the cross. So here we have Jesus. Every step he takes from heaven is a step down. Mm. He steps down from heaven to earth. Yeah. He steps down from just being on earth to being a man. He steps down from just being a man to being a servant. He steps down from just being a servant to being obedient to the point of death on the cross. So each step that he took from heaven yeah. was a step down. And then he went so far as to be buried. So now he's the dies as a servant and now he's buried. Now he's even further down, takes another step down. And not only does he take another step down by being buried, then he takes another step down by descending under earth, descending, as the Bible says, into hell and taking the keys of hell and death from Satan. So, wow, every step of the way, Jesus was stepping down, 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 down. And then look at what happens. It says in verse nine, after he his step, his last step down, obedience to death on the cross, to be buried, to pay for our sins. Then God, it says, verse nine, God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father. So God, like you were saying earlier, God recognized every step down that Jesus took. Yeah. And God highly exalted Jesus and gave him the name above every name. And like you were saying earlier, so many people, they want to become famous. They want to have that moment of fame, that five minutes of fame, or they want to be they want to have likes. They want to be popular. Yeah. They want to be approved by the world. And what we need to realize is the only approval that matters is God's approval. And every step down Jesus took, God was smiling and every step down Jesus took helped us and every step down Jesus took the father recognized that and then gave him the name because because if we humble ourselves, God will exalt us. Right. If we exalt ourselves, life will humble us. Yeah. But if we humble ourselves, life will exalt us. I want to really appeal to our family, our church family, our global family, our local family. Following Jesus means being great, but being great means serving mm. and serving is serving isn't a stepping stone to greatness. It is greatness. <laughs> yeah. And I really want us to get a to have a savage mentality, a savage servant mentality and let that penetrate everybody's soul tonight so that we can become the kinds of people that everywhere we go, we're helping somebody up. Yeah, we're pushing somebody up. We're encouraging somebody and it's time. Church, we breathe in when we have meetings like this and moments like this and Sunday services, we breathe in, but then we got to breathe out that life into others, encouraging them, serving them, helping them become better in their lives as well. Yeah, and I think I, I just want to highlight what you were saying, um, because you, you said we're not we don't think we're better. And yeah. that's just like I, like I don't know how to describe it to everyone, but firsthand, I, I know for a fact I'm not better. Yeah, me know? too. <laughs> but like I I'm just passionate because I've experienced so much grace from God and from family and from church that I want everyone else to experience that. And that's why I lead worship is because not, not because I think I'm, I have a great voice, but because I know that feeling of freedom. Yeah. And and that's why I want. Anyways, this isn't even what I was trying to say, but we know we're not better. Yeah. We we just want to extend the invite, you know, yeah. and the thing about Jesus is G and we were talking about this. Jesus could have easily done his ministry by himself. Right. He, and, and he didn't even need to be a baby to do that. He could have just done it. Just That's him, right. Him being him, but he he chose the steps that you that you listed. But on top of that, he he went out and like rallied people. He rallied dudes and was like, I, yeah, I could do this. I could heal people. I could I could turn water into wine. But I want you guys to do this. Too. Yeah. He, he extended that invite and made it. He he made leadership attainable and yeah. and invited people nor like average people, even below average people <laughs> right. to do that. You know, think about Peter you know, one of the worst like human beings, but amazing leader and yeah. used by God and 
turned out to be incredible um, because Jesus invited him to lead and Peter said yes. And so that's like, I'm just passionate because I think there are people listening, people watching, there's people in the room, there's people on our team and there's more for us. There's more that we can do. There's more people we can reach. There's more of ourselves that we can develop and attain. So great. And like you said, we just got to have that savage um, servanthood, that savage mindset of like, how can I serve others? You know, um, because that is, that is greatness, like you're saying. And so that's, that's what we're here for. We just want to rally people like Jesus did. I love that. Absolutely. And you know, I, I want to double click on something you said as well about Peter, that Peter kind of represents all of us. Mm. And we can get into this later in the in the in the year or as 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 our moments continue. But in this moment, I want people to understand what what made Peter. What I like to call the apostle of leadership, mm. because he really did become the leader of all the disciples. And then Paul and him led two different movements of revival that that changed the world. But but the thing with Peter is he symbolizes that Jesus believes in people mm. and Jesus believed in Peter. And there's something about when somebody believes in you, like when you have somebody who really believes in you, I think the best thing you can give to somebody is to give them the encouragement that you believe in them. Like that's how we tried to raise our family to believe in you guys, to always believe that you yeah. could be better than than we are by far. And you already are uh, better human beings than I, than I am, at least. But the the real point is, no matter what kind of past you have, Peter's a cussing sailor, Peter's the doubter, Peter you know, sinks in the water. Peter's got all these flaws in his life. And yet Jesus still believed in him. And I want to encourage everyone who's watching right now that no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, we all make mistakes. We all blow it. We all fall. Yeah. We all stumble. We all are human. We're we're human. We're in a earthly vessel that is broken, like J.D. just said, broken vessels. But God believes in you. Yeah. And he wants you on the team. He doesn't just want you in the stands as a spectator. He wants you on the team. Christianity has become a spectator sport. Mm. And I'm determined to break that mentality of spectator Christianity and be, and make it a participation sport that obviously not that it's a sport. It's so much more important than that. Yeah. But it is everybody belongs on the team. Everybody has a place. There's a place for everybody and everybody has a place. There's a calling and a invite to everybody. And so I want to encourage every one of our family, church family. Uh, maybe you go to another church like we want to help you. We want to serve you yeah. to be better for your own church. We want to serve you to be better for your families, serve you to be better for the people that you come in contact with. But you need to know something. Somebody here. We believe in you. I believe in you. Yeah. And you know why I'm leading today? You believe in me enough to tune in and turn on and come and and connect. And I'm flawed. And nope. And listen, if you followed my life, you would it wouldn't be that you'd be caught by surprise like, oh, I, I can't believe. But you would you would realize that everybody's flawed. Everybody's human. Everybody makes mistakes, but God still uses us. Yeah. He's not waiting for you to get it all together. Right. He's not waiting for us to get it all together for him to use us. We and if we see it as. Is if we see it as God wants to get me, push me out there to be a leader, sometimes that can be intimidating. But if you see it as all I'm called to do is serve that anything that's that that's asked of you or anything that you can do to serve others is something that God honors, that God values. And you can do it because when you when you roll up your sleeves to serve, it takes all the worry out of it. Like it's not a performance. Yeah. Even worshiping. So you're not you guys aren't up here performing. 
you're serving. So it's easy to, it's easier to do it as a servant than to do it as a performer. Yep. And I want everybody to take that same mentality into your day and serve your family members and serve a, a, a small group, serve in some way. Let us know if you want to get involved in some way and we'll find something for you to do. But we're going to yeah. disciple you this year. Yeah. We're going to raise you up as a leader this year. We're going to give you empowerment this year. We're going to awaken the destiny and the greatness inside of you this year. That's what we're yeah. committing to do. We're, we're calling on believers to become disciples. We're calling on believers to be followers of Jesus. It's still we're saved by his grace. We're yep. empowered by his love. All of that is still true and always will be. But in addition to that, I'm calling the greatness that's inside of you. I'm calling on that and I'm calling it forth and I'm prophesying to the greatness inside of every one of you. Come forth. Yeah. The servant, the savage servant inside of you come forth and let's change this world and let's set this world on fire with discipleship and imparting what we know to others and serving others so they can become the best version of themselves. That's what that's what we want to see accomplished. That's what 2021 to me is building upon 2020 is making disciples that will make more disciples yeah. that will truly change the world one life at a time. Yeah. And what's what's really important to remember and to know is that you don't have to be a preacher. Yeah. You don't have to be a worship leader. You don't have to be on a platform in order to to serve at this capacity or to be used by God. Like God has made all of us so unique and so independent that um, there are different things that we carry, different strengths that we carry. Even it could just be the way that we talk to someone, our tone could really touch someone that, that's, that's right. having a terrible day. You never know. Like you could be at work at, you know, a gas station and someone could walk in having a terrible day. And just the way that you talk to them, like the way God made you, you just happen to have compassion and they're they're changed. They're wrecked. You know, that's that's what wow. we're talking about. That's here, right. That's right. Is that kind of leadership where you, you take it into your practical day and you can make that that person's life. You can encourage someone like for me, I've had really dry seasons where I'm like, dang, am I even like doing anything? Am I even doing any good? But there will be a time where someone will reach out to me like, hey, I'm struggling with this. And I just encourage them just because I'm words of affirmation. I'm, that's, that's how I am. I, so just, good. I just speak like, okay, let me, let me see what I can think of that can encourage this person right now. And then after doing it, I'm like, dang, okay, like I forgot, like that's what I need to do. I need to do that more. And I'm still working on that. Like how can I find opportunities to just encourage more people because that's what I feel is, has been put on my life. And so I'm just saying that as an example that all of us carry unique strengths that God has you know, deposited in us. And that's, that's how he's gonna use us. He's not waiting for us to get it right because we already have the thing yeah. that he's put in us. And we just need to be aware of like, okay, how can I reach someone right now? How can I serve someone right now? So it's not like, hey, you need to give your life over and you need to commit and you need to show up at the church 24 seven. Like it's not, <laughs> yeah. it's not that kind not of we're after. serving. It's yeah. not like that. It's no, you can serve by being you in a secular environment and still bring the light of Jesus in without a message, without a worship song. Like Vlad doesn't have to walk in with his guitar and start singing everywhere. He can just be him and people like can can feel his his impact. They can feel his love. They wow, can feel his compassion. That's so good. What it really is is just the presence of Jesus in us. You know, it really is. And and that just reminded me. And I, I was looking up this scripture. I was trying to find this verse that I was thinking of because of what you said. And it's in Second Corinthians, chapter three, because you said something that really like resonated with me about it's not about we're not trying to get people to become preachers. We're not trying to get people to become to to be on a platform. If God's called you to that, we want we can blow on that. We can encourage that as well. But we want people to realize that God can use them right where they're at. Yeah. Like what you're describing. And in Second Corinthians, Chapter three, it says now you yourselves are our letter written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. He says, you are our epistle, because in the Bible, one of the letters I used to think the epistles were the apostles wives, but they're actually letters written by the apostles to the churches that can, that then created the Bible. But he said we he said we can read the epistles and we can read the scriptures. But he says to the people, 
You are the epistles. You yourselves are our letter and inscribed on our hearts, known and read by everyone. So each and every one of us can be people that others can read our lives, not perfect lives, but they can read our lives that we are. Each of our lives is a story. Each awesome. of our lives is a letter. Awesome. Each of our lives. God is writing something about each of us and God wants people to be able to read what your life is made of. Yeah. And God wants people to see that his work is in people. It's not mm. his work is not to get people to, to know a book. His 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 objective is to get people to be the book. That's awesome. And for people to see that, for us to reflect the image of forgiveness, the image of Jesus, humility, the image of Jesus, gratitude, the image of Jesus, love and compassion. God wants us to be those letters that anybody can read and be impacted by our lives. That's serving 100 percent. And that's what everybody's called to do and be. Yeah. And that's why testimonies are so amazing. So guys, like if you have testimony, a testimony, you're I mean, everyone has one. Yeah. But if you have something that you're like, dang, like this, this has really impacted my life. Like we want to hear that. We sure do. And the reason why isn't so that we can look at like, oh, like we're so great. Like we, <laughs> we changed someone's life. No, it's so that other people can understand and, and know like, dang, God is such a personal God and he knows my thick and thin. He knows what I'm going through. He, and he's, he's bringing me through it. And so you, like you said, our lives are stories. Yeah. Every life matters. Every, every life matters. Every single person matters, whatever their struggle is, whatever their history is, whatever their past is, everything matters because it it glorifies God that he brings us through it, you know, yeah. and it encourages someone else that is maybe earlier on in that journey to to realize that there's light at the end of the tunnel and that their struggle isn't their their finish. It's it's their story is still in writing. And you've chatted about that. Yeah. You know? You've talked about like it's just a new chapter. Your story's That's not right. over, you know, all that stuff. So. Your story is all about God's glory. Your story gives God glory. Even the crazy chapters like even at your young age, you've got crazy chapters. <laughs> yeah. You know, at 25, some of your chapters have been crazy. Some of your chapters have been um, different than what you would have, how you would have written it. Yeah. And it didn't always turn out the way that you thought it would or should. And yet God turned it into something better. My life is full of horror chapters, full, full of broken chapters, full of um, lonely chapters, full of happy chapters. But it's moving. Yeah. And I want people to see I want you guys to understand and for people to understand that. The, the Bible wasn't meant to be read as just a, a book of of commandments and and scriptures and promises, it, it's meant to be a story. It was put together in story form. It was it came together over years of history. Thousands of years of history are his story. And so our life is just a continuation. The early disciples didn't even have the scriptures that we have, but they were following each other as they followed Christ. Yeah. And that's what Paul said. Follow me as I follow Christ. I'm not asking people to follow me in my in my flaws, follow me in my dumb decisions, which there have been plenty, but follow me in the areas that I follow Christ. Yeah, because then and then if we could just drop down and let go of all of our judgments, all of our religiosity, all of our restrictions and demands that every Christian, if they're going to be used by God, they have to behave a certain way. If we could let all that go and just realize God can use you where you're at, God can use you, like you said, to encourage somebody today, to encourage somebody right where you're at, to pray for somebody, to have a tone of of empathy. Like if there's one thing that I learned in 2020, I learned a lot and I'm learning still and I want to learn more. But if one thing if you can have one takeaway from 2020 to me, it's empathy. Mm. Really like saying to somebody, maybe I don't fully understand your journey, but you're not alone in it. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to be there with you yeah. and I'm going to be available to help you 
process your journey, process your pain. Everybody can do that. I've got my own personal issues. I got my own personal pain at times in life, but none of those things stop me from feeling somebody else's pain. Right. And none of those things disqualify me. And I, I feel like people are so afraid of failing that they don't jump forth mm, and they don't good. step forward and serve because they're afraid they're gonna fail. And I wanna encourage you that the church, the body of Christ has not been a good example of helping people fail, fail forward. Sometimes Christians have been judgmental of others who have failed and fallen and pushed them backwards when they failed, pushed them backwards when they fall. But what we should be doing is we should be picking people up when they fall, not pointing at them saying, I knew that you were really had a dark side. I knew you really had some sin in your life. I knew that you really had something that was really going on behind the scenes and now it's come out and, and we become so judgmental and we become so mean as Christians that no wonder non-Christians don't want to be Christians yeah. because Christians aren't being a letter of love. They're being a letter of the law and we have to become letters of, we have to become love letters, not law letters. That's awesome. Man. And if we become that and I want to become that, and I want to invite everybody to join me on this journey, join us on this journey in 2021 of being of becoming love letters. Yeah. Not just knowing the scriptures, but being the love that Jesus is. Yeah. Even though we're failed, even though we're flawed, even though we fail, even though we stumble, let's help each other fail forward and not intimidate each other or judge each other. Let everybody fail, but push them forward when they fail. Let everybody who falls push them forward when they fall rather than push them backwards and disqualify them. Because I don't believe anybody has to be disqualified from serving and being great if they're just humble. Yeah. If I'm just humble, I won't be disqualified. Yeah. Pride is what disqualifies and I, that's the thing that we should be and resisting. There's, and there's no growth without failure. That's you, right. You can't learn if you don't fail, you can't learn and, and adapt and evolve if you're not, if you're not failing. That's you know? right. And so that's why we shouldn't be afraid to step out. Like, I think, I think what we want people to hear tonight is like, we're going to challenge you to be bold and Good. to really believe in yourself. Because if God believes in us, God believes in, in all of us, then we can believe in ourselves and we can really be bold and challenge ourselves to step out and to be used by God. You know, it's, it's almost, a, it's pretty much a faith thing. Serving yeah. is, is a faith thing as well. Like Peter walking on water. It's like, it's, it's going to take some stepping out. It's going to take some being bold. It's going to take some un discomfort, but that's good. that is how we're going to grow. That's how, that's, that's when God meets us in that unknown territory and he comes through and fills our mouth with words, fills our, our hearts uh, with compassion so that we can be that light to people, be that love letter to people. And so I think it's just safe to say that, you know, like anyone that's listening to this can expect that from us and what we're going for in 2021. And yeah. don't be surprised if we get a little passionate, get a little fired up. Yeah. We want to see, we, what we really want is for everyone to be the best version of themselves. Absolutely. And this is how we're going to, experience that you know by being being used by god that's that's how we're gonna get to that level of like i am being the best version of myself and i'm continuing to be the best the better version tomorrow i'm gonna be better tomorrow i'm gonna be better and god continues to use us in yeah. that in that that um tension of humility with greatness yeah yeah that's really good the tension of humility and greatness the greatness is activated by serving which is an act of humility to serve somebody else is an act of humility. And I think the takeaway you can take away that we're going to ask, we're going to ask you and inspire you and encourage you to be bold. We're going to call the greatness in you. We're going to call it forth. And when you see an opportunity to serve, take it, yep. look for it. You can go to our website at lifechangerschurch.com you can go to look at our global community and all the different areas you can serve in 
find one that you can serve in. You can be an intercessor. You can be a, a life group leader. You could be a, um, a web or a, a watch party host. You can send our salvation links to unsaved loved ones or unsaved unloved ones, <laughs> because that's the greatest act of love is to is to teach, show, show them and share with them the gospel. So those are some, maybe some practical steps. Stay connected, stay connected, stay close, be a part of what is happening here and s get involved in some way. Take one step this before this month is over. Yeah. Before January ends, take one step by finding an area in our global community that you can serve and sign up for it or do it and look at I think it's lifechangerschurch.com slash connect and you can find a place to serve and anybody can be great. Martin Luther King Jr. said because anybody can serve and Jesus said don't be among those that are talking about who's the greatest because the greatest among you is the servant of all. Yeah. And we I'm inviting you. Joseph's challenging you and I'm inviting you with his challenge to be bold Come on. and to step out and to step out in faith and not just step out in faith and and give, but give. Yes, yeah, step out in faith and give in the offering, but step out in faith and give yourself and give your servanthood to people and the God of of the universe is going to exalt you and you're going to see your destiny come to pass through the pathway of serving. Yeah. And that's it. That's yeah. where we're going. Greatness is in you. We're pulling it out. 100 percent. So and we're excited. We're excited. This is going to be some really neat content that we're going to get into uh, unfolding this, what leadership looks like, how we've been challenged, how you know what leadership has looked like for us in our church and just excited to roll that out and get stuff going. So. And, and every one of you, everyone, every one of us is called to be a leader for right. life, That's a right. leader for life, not for a moment, not for a, just a group, but a leader for life. And you're going to see your life blossom because you're focused on serving. Yeah. And being a servant is the greatest imitation of Jesus. Being a loving servant is the greatest imitation of Jesus. Let's pray together before we end moments tonight. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, I thank you for every person who is in the sound of my voice. That you would awaken in them the greatness, awaken in them the destiny, awaken in them the ignition switch for their purpose, their calling, their des their destiny, that it's so simple to just start by serving in some area, awaken them to what area will stir up their heart and stir up their faith, show them which what is the next step for each person today. And for those of you that are watching right now who've never received Jesus Christ as your savior and Lord, pray with me. Right now is your moment to become a part of the family of God. Pray with me right now. Just pray after me. Say, Heavenly Father, just say that out loud. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ into my life. Say that as my savior and Lord, I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. And from this moment forward, I'm a child of God. Amen. It's Amen. so simple. If you prayed that prayer, go on to our website and download this book, The Power of a New Life. It's absolutely free. It's my gift to you to help you grow in your relationship with God, to help you take the next steps now in your relationship with God. Any closing thoughts, Joseph? Don't forget, Fast and Wrong Thinking is starting February 1st, so sign up. And also for any parents or any youth that are watching, we're having a worship night this Friday uh, for Champion Youth. And so you don't want to miss that as well. We have something coming up Monday on top of Fast and Wrong Thinking <laughs> for the youth specific. So be tuned into that. Check it out. And we'll see you guys Friday night. So great. Love you guys. Have a beautiful rest of your night.